Buddha and all six perfections. May I attain Buddhahood for the sake of all beings. To the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, I go for refuge. For the power of generosity in all six perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. To the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, I go for refuge. For the power of generosity in all six perfections, may I attain Buddhahood for the benefit of all beings. Glorious, precious guru, please sit above my crown on a lotus moon seat. Care for me with great compassion and grant the city of body, speech, and mind. So thank you all for being here tonight. It's a small group, but that's sort of cool. Um, is there any, I, is, am I, I'm looking over all the people and I think everyone has been here before. So you sort of know the routine, I think. So we won't, we won't belabor that too much. But uh, <clears throat> so I welcome you all. Thank you for being here. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, you'll, you'll gain some benefit from being here tonight. By the way, can you hear me? Okay, good. You can hear me. I've had trouble with that before. So uh, I'll give you a little outline of what we're going to do tonight. Uh, first of all, uh, I'll uh, introduce uh, tonight's topic, which is resilience. We'll do a group contemplation on the topic based on questions that I will ask the group. And uh, then we'll do uh, uh, meditation based upon instructions that I give. There'll be a period of meditation. Tonight we're going to stretch it a little bit. We're going to do maybe like six minutes. Uh, now, there's no problem. If you can't do that, don't worry about it. Just, uh, just relax. Uh, if you fall out of meditation and that's too much, it's too big of a stretch, not to worry. Don't worry about it. Uh, and if you can come back in later on, that's fine too. But if you can't, that's fine. But we'll do about six minutes. Then after that, there'll be a period of time we can uh, ask questions uh, about meditation. If there are no questions, then I'll go into the topic for tonight. And then after that, because we're a small group, I think it would be really nice if we could uh, do, uh, we could actually. Uh, do a little uh, response to our contemplation and to the thought. Um, so be prepared to, uh, for responses. Now, there really is gonna be a short session. <laughs> if nobody has any <laughs> questions or responses, which, you know, that's okay too. And, uh, then we'll do, uh, we'll end with a, another meditation. So that's, that's the outline for tonight. So let's start by my introducing the topic. And the topic is resilience. And there are a lot of different definitions of what resilience is. I just take the Webster Dictionary uh, definition. It says, the capacity to recover from difficulties. That's a pretty simple definition. Uh, another definition is to recover from or adjust to misfortune and change. Certainly, that's a uh, timely topic, I think. <laughs> um, and uh, so, so it is basically the, ca the capacity to recover from difficulties. That's, that, that'll be our working definition. Psychology today says it's the quality that allows people to be knocked down by adversity, the adversities in life, and come back strong. Resilient people find a way to change course heal emotionally and continue to move on to whatever goal they have in mind. 
That's what psychology today says. Sounds good. So it's basically uh, like Shakespeare says, the ability to weather the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, sort of like that too. So I think you get the idea what resilience is. So we're going to do a little contemplation tonight. Contemplation is different than meditation in that in contemplation, we actually take an idea, we think about it, look at it at different angles and see how, um, uh, uh, how that might apply. So what I want to do is there'll be three contemplations. And I basically want you to take this uh, and sort of mull it over in your mind. And we'll take about a minute or two on each contemplation. The first one, and you can close your eyes if you like, if that helps you, that's fine. If, if, if you don't want to, that's fine too. But uh, the first contemplation is, recall a time you were resilient. What inner qualities were called upon you when you were being resilient, working through that hardship, that difficulty? Recall that time and those qualities that you were called upon to use. Try to recall it as vividly as you can. What helped you the most to recover? This is the first contemplation. So to end this contemplation, was there ever a moment in your recovery you were able to recognize your courageousness? And if you weren't, now's a good time to do that. The second contemplation is, who assisted you in your recovery in overcoming your obstacle? How did they help you? And what qualities did they possess? whether you were able to show gratitude to them then or not, I invite you to express your gratitude to them now. The third contemplation Recall a person you consider to be resilient. It can bounce back. That bounces back maybe every day. What qualities do they possess? What do you admire most about them?
Now, finally, did you recognize them? Have you ever recognized their qualities to them in gratitude? And if you haven't, even if you have, you're welcome to do it again here and now. So this is the end of the three contemplations I wanted to begin with tonight. And I'd like for you to sort of hold them in your heart and we'll come back to them a little bit later. Right now, we're going to do a few moments of meditation and I'm going to go over the instructions for that. You know, sometimes you get really tired of teachers going over the instructions with you, but it's like this. Uh, would you get in an airplane if the if the pilot didn't go over the uh, the uh, panel that says uh, you know uh, the, the 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 instrument panel to sort of check it out a pre-flight kind of thing? Well, of course you wouldn't. Well, it's sort of like this with meditation. Why would you want to take off in meditation without doing a little pre-flight uh, investigation as to uh, what you're doing? So it's like that. So we'll give the instructions again. And I'll, I won't give them quite as elaborately as uh, Amma Kathy did. Uh, I'll, I'll make them short, sort of as a reminder to you. So the first is if you're sitting in a chair, um, assure that your feet are firmly on the ground and that your back, if possible, is away from the back of the chair so that you're upright, straight and upright. Nice, nice straight back. So we'll go from the bottom to the top. And the uh, bottom, your legs are crossed, either one in front of the other or one uh, foot on the thigh. It, that's however you uh, like to do that and are comfortable with. Most important thing here too is that you have some comfort in your, in your posture. Your hands are, uh, as L Lama Adam demonstrated last night, you can put your thumbs uh, next to your ring, ring fingers and fold your, your uh, fingers over your uh, thumb and, and drape them over your knees. Your back again, nice and straight. Your chin sort of tucked in a bit. So your neck is in line with your back. Your eyes in a soft gaze off the tip of your nose. And uh, if you need to place, uh, rest your gaze, uh, it's uh, about arm's length out from you but it's a soft gaze, not looking at anything in particular. If you like to close your eyes, that's okay. Just make sure you don't fall asleep. And your tongue against your palate. And that's so that your, your chin, or excuse me, your, uh, um, your nice and relaxed jaw is nice and relaxed. And what we're going to do is place our attention on our breath. Nice and relaxed attention on our breath. At first, we take a nice deep breath in and then relax it out. And from there on, we just breathe naturally, nothing fabricated. We're not trying to deep breathe. We're just naturally breathing. And the technique is very simply this. When our attention, as it will, wanders, we bring it back to our breath. I should also mention that there are different ways to 
put your attention on your breath. You can put your attention right below your nose where the, uh, the breath comes in and out and notice it coming in and out. Or you can sort of pay attention to the breath coming in, going in, and then going out. That's okay too, but whatever you like there. So now that we've had our pre-flight instructions, it's very important that we establish our intention. What are we intending to do here? Our intention is to meditate, to use the instructions to meditate with the intention that whatever good comes of this, it is for everyone's benefit, including our own. That's really important. We just don't sit down and, and go to it. We have intention and that helps establish more clearly what we're doing. We're just not jumping into it. So establish clearly in your mind that you're going to meditate. Whatever comes, you're going to meditate and you're going to do it with the intention to help all beings to benefit all beings. So let's do this for uh, a few moments here.
Thank you. So does anyone have any questions in regards to meditation, not the subject of um, resilience, but on meditation itself? <clears throat> If not, we'll continue. And you're certainly, yeah, you can write in chat if you if you do have a question. So uh, we're going to talk about resilience tonight. And I'm really happy that Lamo's here because I think that's probably something um, that's been very key to um, to being a chaplain is knowing how people are resilient and also. Uh, to be yourself resilient in the face of all these difficulties. So I'm glad you're here and you can, uh, I'll be happy for you to uh, chime in anytime. So resilience. So far we've talked about uh, how, first of all, the first night on Sunday, we talked about the instructions and Mama Kathy gave a great talk on uh, why we uh, meditate and and uh, I won't go over that, but you know that. The, the second thing, the second night, we talked about confidence, how, how we develop confidence in our meditation. And we develop confidence in dealing with those thoughts that oppress us. Last night, Lama Adam talked about uh, courage. And courage basically in the context of meditation is being able to, to see ourselves, to, to, to come up against our own face and see ourselves in the thoughts that we think. And we begin to have the courage to see who we are, both the good and the bad. That's courage. So it's through confidence and courage that we develop resilience, the ability to recover from difficulties and to adapt to misfortune. All these qualities, confidence, courage, and resilience are sort of aspects of the same thing. They're, they're looking at different facets of perhaps the same thing. And, uh, we Buddhists call it our Buddha nature. In a word, a capacity, our infinite capacity actually for growth. That's the basis of our courage. It's the basis of our confidence and it's the basis of our resilience we can be confident because we already have these qualities. And in meditation, what we are doing is slowly, slowly, slowly uncovering them. They're already there. We don't have to dig for them externally. They already are within us. This talk, by the way, is not about Buddha nature. That's a big subject. I'm just explaining this because it's the basis for all of our good qualities. And it's important to recognize that. So let's return to resilience. It's the ability to recover from adversity. You and I know that meditation is not always easy. I mean, maybe the advertising for it says, oh, you know, it's easy, blah, 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 and all that kind of stuff. You and I know that's not true. It's difficult sometimes. 
Why? Because we bring ourselves to the meditation cushion. And sometimes we're in turmoil. And so when we sit down, that turmoil will arise in thought, doesn't it? And we have to deal with that, manage that. So if before I sit down, I'm angry at a coworker and had a big blow up, or I'm jealous because someone got a position I wanted, or worse, if I've lost a partner or lost in a relationship, I'm gonna bring all that to the meditation, meditation cushion. It's just the way it is. So how do we deal with it in meditation? First of all, and most importantly, we don't suppress it. It's going to arise. It's going to arise naturally. Suppressing it, no. That's really unhealthy. On the other hand, we don't follow it. We don't jump in and follow it. What do we do? Gently recognize it, as Lama Kathy says, touch and let go. Now, I'll tell you another little secret. It may not work the first time. It may not work the second time. It may not work for a month. Have you ever had a situation that so upset you that it was in your mind for like weeks? And there you are on the meditation cushion, having that thought, that angry thought, that jealous thought, that whatever thought arise. but you had the confidence in the method that you continued to sit. And you had the courage to recognize that's where you're at. And you didn't run away from it. You sat. That's hard. But you did it. You did it. If the hurt was deep, if the loss was great, or if you have cultivated that kind of thing habitually throughout your life, this is no easy task. So this thought may arise again and again. They don't tell you this in the advertising, do they? <laughs> they don't tell you that but that's our experience it happens but again we have confidence in the process and we have the courage to face who we are So by pressing on with our meditation, with confidence and courage, we develop a resilience to weather that inner mental storm. Whether that storm is huge or small. Through meditation, we, that whole process, we begin to develop perspective on our thoughts as thoughts. That's what we do on the cushion. Off the cushion, it's a little different, but, but the process is much the same. 
you might have noticed, <laughs> you might have noticed that uh, when you're in the middle of one of these intense emotional states, your thinking becomes very much one note. You sing that one note throughout the day. So if you're angry, that angry thought tunes out every other thought other than thoughts that confirm your anger. <laughs> you ever done that? It's hell. I mean, that's really awful. It's hell. <laughs> and, but we put ourselves through this, don't we? And if we're jealous, every other, th that jealous thought tunes out every other thought, but jealousy. And we go about that. So it's like, our focus when we're in these states becomes tunnel vision. Another way to look at it is it becomes smack dab in the middle of your face. Now with this emotion, smack dab in the middle of my face, I can't see you, I can't see anything. I can only see this emotion. I can't see the beauty in the world. I can't see anything. I just see this hand, but through meditation, we start to develop some perspective on that. The hand's still the hand, but it's, and it's no smaller or no bigger than it was here, but it's in a more realistic perspective where you want it to be. And that's what meditation can help begin to do for us. We want to find a way out of this vicious negative feedback loop that these afflictive emotions produce in us. We want to find a way to short circuit this cycle off the cushion. So trauma specialists and chaplains and psychologists call this process off the cushion, cognitive reappraisal. I love those words, cognitive reappraisal. We think, how could we think of this differently? so that it's not hurting us so much. It's a way to nudge our thoughts and emotions toward a more balanced view and towards recovery. So this process of cognitive reappraisal, again, I, th those words just roll off my mouth, I love them. Cognitive reappraisal. That process involves two things. The first thing is recognizing that the negative pattern of thought that I have, recognizing, that's the first step. What are we developing in meditation? Awareness. So off the cushion, we're going to use that awareness to recognize this negative thought pattern. So often we get we so caught up in the thought, the anger or whatnot, we don't even recognize that it's not helpful. We just indulge in it. We jump on the on the train and go. So the first step to recovery is recognizing the negative thought pattern awareness, something we develop in meditation. The second thing is we have to change the pattern to one that is more effective. This is mindfulness. What did Lama Adam say mindfulness was? The mind's capacity to adopt what is helpful and the ability of the mind to abandon what is unhelpful. 
That's mindfulness. So the second step is to change, to adopt a pattern of thought that's more effective. And changing your thoughts can in turn change the course of your emotions. I'm gonna give you a really simple example, a really simple example. Um, it, it, it doesn't apply anymore because you have GPS, right? GPS, is that the word? The, yes. So um, I used to live in Columbus and uh, that was like 40 years ago. And now I go, uh, uh, to Col uh, I went to Columbus and I always, because it's so built up, I get lost. This was before GPS. I would get lost. And the thoughts that ran through my mind were something like, you idiot, you dummy, you're always getting lost. You, you can't do anything right, blah, 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 blah. Cognitive reappraisal might be, you know, I'm lost. I might as well enjoy the scenery until I find my way back to where I'm going. I mean, that's a, that's, that's a very simple example, but uh, you know, it makes sense. Now, these uh, reappraisals are true. They're not merely the power of positive thinking, but they're based on reality. And the reality of what's, what, what the situation is. Now, even though we do this reappraisal, cognitive reappraisal, even though we do that, we might still have that other thought back there. And it may come up every once in a while. You'll hear it. But now you can add a bit of nuance to it adding a different viewpoint to it and thinking a way uh, that keeps the lid on your level of distress, whether it's anger, grief, or what. So the idea here is to allow other ways of making sense of a situation to coexist with the more emotional triggering appraisal. They coexist together. And what do we do in meditation? A good thought comes up. It's just a thought, just as much as a bad thought. So in a sense, in a way, we could say they coexist in our mind. So this is what cognitive reappraisal is. And it's how it's developed, actually, in meditation. And it's one of the ways And there. Resilience is a huge topic. I can't go into all the, I mean, there are books written on, I'm just giving you one aspect that's helpful to me at least, and hopefully it is to you. So, um, we, through this sort of process in meditation on the cushion and reappraisal off the cushion, we develop the skills to weather life storms. Um, so I'm going to take a, just a moment. We're running out of time, shoot. Uh, so I'll be quick. <laughs> um, I'm going to tell you a moment uh, where I uh, was able to show some re uh, resilience. Um, some, year, some years back, about two years ago, my wife had a horrible accident and uh, I was at KTD. Uh, and uh, so I wanted to get home as quickly as I could. So in the middle of the night, I get in my car and I'm driving home and I'm thinking, oh my God, how horrible this is. Oh, geez. And I, you know, the thoughts of anticipation, grief, sorrow, all that came up. 
And in the middle of my car ride, mid-morning, Lama Karma called me. And he said, your guru is praying for you. And that changed the whole perspective. I rode home with my guru right with me. Connection to other people also makes us resilient. So my wife was uh, in rehabilitation. And I don't know if you know what a nursing home is like, but it can be pretty depressing. On the, uh, uh, on the hall she was uh, in, uh, uh, living, uh, people were dying every day. Not every day, but often. It was a pretty dismal place. And so one night, to sort of change our perspective, my wife said, let's have a candlelight dinner. <laughs> and we had, so I went out and I, I got some uh, bring in spaghetti and I brought in some candles from home. And we, and uh, I'm, I'm Buddhist and I don't drink alcohol, but this night we had some wine. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> and it was like party time. A change of perspective by just how we saw the situation. Now then, I'm going to tell you about someone that helped me get in my, uh, when I was uh, feeling really negative. Um, a couple of months ago, I fell and broke both, both my wrists. And one of the really cool things about having a catastrophic incident is that you meet some really wonderfully skillful and compassionate people. <laughs> I mean, my doctor came in and here I'm all bandaged up and feeling really bad. And he just had this quiet, confident, compassionate air. He just filled the room with it when he walked in. And he put his hand gently on my wrists. And he said, we're going to work on this. It'll get better. And because of his confidence, because of his compassion, and because of his skill, I'm better. I have a therapist, a wonderful therapist, who's working with me. I often go in with my wrists all swollen and can't move them. And this therapist is so kind, so sweet, so loving. I mean, she places her hand on my wrist and massages it gently. And it's like a miracle. The swelling goes down every time. And in my mind, her hands are one of the thousand hands of Avalokiteshvara. That's how I feel. So, how we manage our difficulties depends upon our perspective. And shifting that a bit can mean all the difference in the world. It can mean the difference between being on a place where death is prevalent and being in an Italian restaurant. eating a beautiful meal. And meditation can help us with that. Okay, so we have 10 minutes, close to 10 minutes. So um, I'd like to open this up for a conversation. You're, you're welcome to make comments. 
ask questions or talk about your own reflections uh, upon your, your own contemplations. So I open it up for everybody. I think there were some questions somebody wrote in per, um, oh, okay. just to let you know. Okay. Uh, hmm. Let's see if I can get, oh, two questions. I have read or heard in teachings regarding meditation that one should do many short sessions versus trying to do long sessions. And that would be correct. Uh, particularly for us beginners, shorts, because as Laura McCarthy said, you want to be able to get up refreshed. Uh, you don't want to say, oh my God, do I have to do this again? So short sessions are, are good. However, I would also want to add that it's okay to once in a while to stretch yourselves a bit. That's good but you don't want to stretch yourself to such an extent, you don't want to do it again. So in other words, you might do five minutes today, you might add another minute the next day and so forth uh, to your level of comfort. So yes, I, I, I would agree with uh, the person who wrote that statement. Can you speak to that and maybe suggest a cadence of scheduling sitting time. Hmm. That's a good question. I, uh, the rhythm about that. Well, I think you have to try, test it out. Every, it, you know, it's like we always say, it depends, depends on the individual. I'm going to tell you a story right now, however. It's a story about a, a, a professor in a business school. Um, one time he brought in this big uh, jar and uh, out of his briefcase, he put a, a bunch of big rocks in that jar and uh, filled them up to the top with these big rocks. And he asked the class, he said, class, is the jar full? And the class said, yes, it's full, professor. Then the professor reached into his uh, satchel and he pulled out smaller rocks and he put them in the jar and shook the jar around and they settled down and, and filled the jar. And then he said, class, is a jar filled now? And they're sort of catching on here and they say, maybe not, no, no, it's not. So sure enough, the professor pulls out sand and he pours sand and shakes it about and fills the jar. And he says, it, is it filled now? And they said, yes. He said, no. So he then gets water and pours water in it. So he says to the class, class, what does, what does, what's the lesson to be learned here? And one very astute business student said, professor, what that means is there's always room to stuff more in your schedule. There's always room to put more thoughts in your mind. He said, no, that's not, that's not it. He said, the lesson to be learned here is put the big things in first. Prioritize is meditation a big deal for you make it a priority put it in first we often give advice well figure out where, where you can fit it in well that's that's not bad advice either but i say if it's important enough put it in first make it a priority whenever you can and again, it doesn't matter if it's two minutes or two hours, whatever it is you do, make it a priority for that day. And make it a priority to develop your ability to meditate. 
we, we've heard all the reasons why it's so important, right? The medical benefits and all this sort of thing, right? We've heard that. We know it's important. So put that big rock in the jar, put, put that in your schedule first, make that a priority. So to answer the person's question, I think it all depends where, where you put it. Do a little um, experimenting. Where does it fit best? And where does it work most effectively for you? Do it that way, but make it a priority. Other thoughts, questions, or concerns, or just reflections? We have a few more minutes. Thank you so much, Lama Tom, for sharing this topic. Um, as you said, I kind of have to go for resilience a lot, even though we cannot always do that. We always often have to push it. But I've told this story maybe to a few people. When, pan when the pandemic started in the hospital, I'll never forget my first day. I was at the James. I consider myself pretty courageous, rather arrogant kind of walking into most situations, no problem. When I got to work, I suddenly had something wrong with my stomach and then my whole body. I realized I was overcome with utter fear. I had never had that type of fear. And the main unit I work on was the COVID unit, not to go in the rooms, but to support the staff. And I, everybody was so afraid to catch him COVID that I didn't know what to do. So I reviewed what I should wear. It took me quite a while to get down there. And I watched all these very young people, new to medicine, essentially really going way beyond what they normally would have been called to do helping people. And it was a very emotional place. Everybody was screaming. Everyone had new masks. You couldn't understand what we were all saying. And I just stood there and just was in awe of their courage. And then I stepped back and I spoke to several nurses about my own fear. And they said, we're all going through that now. So we all talked about ways to deal with that. And so I, it was really something. For, and so I went upstairs and I just tried to practice. I couldn't practice. I was so jittery, but so I just did Tonglen for all of them. And to this day, I'm just amazed how many people are out there that have so much courage and compassion. I think compassion really did something for me. And then a second story I wanted to share, when I was an early Buddhist, um, it was after I had a stroke, so emotionally I was very raw. And I was very sensitive to what people said to me or how people treated me. And I had someone who I considered a close friend who treated me pretty badly, would often ignore me or say they would come over or call and they would never do that. And I got to meet Minja Rinpoche, who's famous for talking about dealing with the emotions. So I told him about this and he said, oh, this is wonderful. It's so great to have a topic to use for your meditation. So he said, instead of, like you said, not don't suppress it, just be relaxed with it. And later on, you'll probably reflect why that person is that way. It's not you. And so, and he just made me much more relaxed with my own I was very uncomfortable having all this distraction in my meditation. And it was the best thing. It was a fertilizer <laughs> for my practice. So, yes. so thank you so much. This is a very important topic. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. It is. Um, and I'm going to challenge you, uh, Lamo. I'm going to say, when you say um, pushing it, uh, is, uh, that to me is a form of resilience, pushing through. So yeah. uh, I, I think it's that way too. Um, yeah. But of course we have to be gentle with ourselves and know what our limits are. And that's, that's being resilient too. We wanna to come back for another day. And if, uh, right. if we push beyond our limit, uh, we won't be back for another day. Yeah. Yeah. We are over time, but I am willing for a few moments to entertain anybody else's thoughts, questions or reflections. If not, 
Guys, I can't tell you um, what a pleasure and privilege it has been to be with you tonight. Um, it's, it's wonderful to share this time. Someone was saying that uh, being in a group and meditating was wonderful. And I think it's because um, we have a common intention and we know that everybody has this same intention to meditate for the benefit of all beings. And that, that's powerful when all of us get together like that. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for being here together. Let's end with a, a prayer. By this merit, this merit of being together, this merit of thinking about resilience, by being resilient, may we attain awakening. May this merit, this merit of resilience, defeat the enemy wrongdoing. From the stormy waves of birth, old age, sickness, and COVID, and death, from this ocean of samsara, may I and you free all beings. May we free all beings. May we free all beings. Thank you. Have a great week, guys, and uh, see you. Well, we'll actually, we'll be here tomorrow, won't we? I'm not sure. Do you, do you know who's uh, talking tomorrow? L Lama, I don't know, you know, because tomorrow night, Lama Kathy has the other talk. I'm kind of confused. Um, I believe it's Eric Weinberg tomorrow night. He's oh, going to okay. talk about humor. So, yeah. yeah, which is uh, sort of a... Uh, a, a good uh, a second cousin to uh, resilience, isn't it? Yeah, they, they are related. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much, and uh, we will we will see you tomorrow. Good night, thank everybody. You. Bye. Be safe. Thank you.